are at the Charleston Distilling Company, and today it is my pleasure to be talking about flavored liqueurs. Where do we even begin when we talk about liqueurs? What is a liqueur? Well, a liqueur, a liqueur can have a base of any spirit to start with. It could be a whiskey, could be a vodka, could technically start with a gin. Whatever base you take, you're going to do a maceration, an infusion of some sort of an herb, a spice, uh, some sort of nut, fruit, or even the juice thereof. And in the end, you're gonna add some sugar back in. You guys are making your liqueurs in-house, but for people who aren't familiar and say, like, what are some famous liqueurs that people might be familiar with? Uh, there's many. Amaretto would be a famous one that has an almond base. Uh, there's a lot of very herbaceous liqueurs uh, like Jägermeister and um, Grand Marnier, things like that. Anything that's going to have a little sweetness added back in. Uh, a lot of things you're going to drink after dinner would be a liqueur. So what are the advantages of a smaller batch liqueur than some of those larger brands that you just mentioned? Well, what we're able to do is actually do a fresh maceration every time. So with our ginger liqueur, for example, we're going to hand peel that ginger, smash it up, and let it sit in there for a month in a fresh maceration. We give it a nice stir every day. And um, we do the same with the uh, pecan as well. So we'll actually shell those, make sure you get all the shell out of there so you don't have any bitter element left. And, and we're allowed to let it just sit there rather than use any sort of artificial flavor in order to mass produce something on a quick scale. What are the best bases? Because obviously you can do it with any base, mm -hmm. but I'm sure some sort of take to certain items better than others. Certainly, and it's going to depend on what you're putting in there, what it can stand up to. Mm -hmm. So with a liqueur, you can actually extract into any of the three elements you're using. You have an ethanol base element, you have water you're going to cut it with, and you also have the sugar. Now you can extract into any of the three of those depending on what you're using. Things like flowers, if you wanted a floral liqueur, you're gonna want a very clean base. You'd probably want to start with something like a vodka. And you're probably gonna want to proof that down in the end to closer to 20% or 40 proof. Anything that's a root, like a ginger or a nut, can actually hold up to a much higher alcohol. So you can actually extract that into the ethanol base or you can extract it into the sugar itself. And what about for someone who says, oh, I want to do it into a whiskey or a burger, or some of the like stronger spirits that mm -hmm. have a stronger flavor, what types of things hold up well? You're going to want something, uh, like I was saying, a floral is very delicate. You're going to want something a little heartier. Right. Uh, roots and nuts and that sort of thing work really well. Um, ethanol is very good at extracting flavor. It extracts better than water. Uh, so if you have something hearty that can sit in a higher ethanol content, you're going to extract flavor a lot quicker. Mm. And so is there an amount of time, you know, you mentioned certain things are more delicate or they're less delicate. Does that also affect the amount of time that they sit in the liquor? Very much so. If you're doing a straight maceration into the ethanol, it can extract very well, but it's going to want to sit in there at least three or four weeks. If you're doing something delicate into a water like a flower, you're actually going to make a tea with it. So it's really done and it's only going to steep for a few minutes. Uh, and then once you have that tea, you've extracted in the water, you add the ethanol in that at that point is unflavored, and then you'll add your sugar on top of that. Mm. And so when you also add other ingredients, you add a sugar or you add something sort of beyond just whatever the flavoring agent is, how do you know what's the right balance for that? Obviously practice and being a professional. But yeah, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of it is trial and error. Yeah. Uh, the, the government defines it as being at least 2.5% sugar by weight mm -hmm. in order to be a liqueur. Um, and the most I've usually seen is about 15 to 20%. Mm -hmm. So you kind of play with it in that range. Uh, yeah, and some are much sweeter than others. Some need it, some don't. So. And let's talk about some of the examples you have here. So for the ginger, what's the base, how much sugar, how long do you leave it for? Okay. The uh, ginger is a base of extremely high proof whiskey. Mm -hmm. So we distill it around 170 proof. Wow. And it's going to sit in that base at that 85% ethanol base. Serious? Yes, <laughs> for about a month. Now we actually do a little bit of cinnamon there as well. Uh, I like to have a few different notes that hit on the tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, you get that heat from the ginger up front and then the kind of cinnamon on the finish. And we do a similar thing with our pecan. We uh, yeah. start out with a pecan flavor. You're going to get that nice smokiness up front. We roast them first. It allows to get a lot more flavor in there. And then we do a little bit of clove that we actually I extract into the sugar base. So when I talk about sugar, it's actually a simple sugar. So you're doing equal parts sugar and water. For the ginger, we do a white sugar or cane sugar. And for the pecan, we actually do a uh, inverse brown sugar. But if you're doing it at home, I would say just test it every day. Right. And when you're talking about spices as well, you know, you mentioned cinnamon or cloves. Is it important to do those whole rather than ground so that it can seep in, or does it matter? Um, 
you can do them whole or ground. I would actually break it up, not extremely fine. I wouldn't grind it in a coffee grinder. It's right. going to be extremely hard to get out of your product right. at that point. Oh, yeah. So cinnamon, I would break up. The more surface area you can get to create, uh, the better you're going to be. And is it the same with your whole ingredients? You want to cut up your ginger, you want to cut up nuts and make sure that there's enough surface area? Yes, we smash everything up, uh, yeah. you know, big enough that you can certainly see it, but just not ground right. up. Yeah, the ginger, we peel it. You, Ginger, you always want to get the peel off. If you're right. using nuts, make sure you get all of the shell and then the little bits in between. Mm -hmm. uh, those will leave a very bitter flavor if you let them sit in your ethanol too long. How can you go about making sure you get everything out? If you're doing it at home, I would recommend using a nut milk bag, which is used for making things like almond milk and that sort of thing. Right. Um, and it's a very fine mesh, and it's made from nylon. It won't stretch on you, and it can take out any particle that you could probably see with your naked eye. Well, thank you so much for demystifying liqueurs for us. And obviously, if you don't want to make it at home and you want to buy the real thing, you can always get it here at Charleston Distilling Co. Thank you so much. You're welcome.